And as the sun rises on the Lone Star State and the Bayou City of Houston, Texas, 52 anglers are beginning a three-day journey in hopes that they will grasp that trophy at the end. Texas is going to be through the roof with crowds, participation. Just the sheer number of anglers in Texas is astronomical. The old cliche that everything's bigger in Texas, there's a lot of truth to that. I dreamed of having a classic here. We're an outdoor community within the state of Texas. I've spent my whole life in Texas. Uh, it is definitely my favorite place to be. This is one of the hotbeds for bass fishing in our country. You know, being in Houston, you know, the Super Bowl was just here. It's Super Bowl week for us. The best thing that could happen to me here at Lake Conroe in Houston, Texas, is to finish the tournament and not be able to find my jersey after it's over. 18 pounds, five. I think it's going to be the most interesting classic we've ever had. Randy any classic, it doesn't matter where it is or who's the best angler there or who lives there. It's anybody's game, and that's what makes it so special. You know, your life does change when you win a Bassmaster Classic. The Classic in general is the biggest week of your entire season. It's the biggest week of your entire career. I love this place. It's one of the top states in the country for bass fishing. This will be the biggest, greatest Classic we've ever had in the history of our sport. This is the kind of Classic where you're going to see eights, nines, even 10 pounders caught. And Hard to do that in any other part of the country except Texas. Well, you heard it, the anticipation is obviously off the charts as it is every year for the World Championship of Bass Fishing, the Geico Bassmaster Classic. Welcome to the Toyota Bassmaster Studios. Tommy Sanders here with Davey Height and Mark Zona and Z. Of course, we're all excited, but for these guys, it's, it's more than that. For them, it represents the biggest opportunity of their life. No doubt about it. And really, if you look at the, the, the underlining story right now in this tournament is the strength of this classic field. All the way down the list, you have past classic champions against some of the future legends of the sport. And really, the, the X factor on this lake is going to be the size of what lives here. The first thing I thought about when they announced this Bassmaster Classic is gosh, the size of fish that these guys are going to catch, the big stringers, and somebody's going to catch a big stringer, make a move. Like you said, the field from top to bottom is loaded with really, really good anglers. They wouldn't be at the Bassmaster Classic if they didn't earn it. And lots of big fish. The fish will be moving. There'll be fish caught pre-spawn, spawn, and post-spawn. It'll be really exciting. Absolutely, and it will be a challenge for these guys. No doubt about that. Let's get started with the first of three days of fishing. Let's go to our Geico quotes from the boat. Robbie Floyd standing by with our defending champion, Edwin Evers. How does it feel, Edwin Evers, to finally be called the defending champion of the Bassmaster Classic and you show up here in Texas? It's awesome. You know, just last year, you know, it was a great whirlwind year. All the things that got to transpire through the year, you know, going and appearing on Fox and Friends in, in New York and the whole Wounded Warriors, you know, the Optima Batteries Healing Hero and Action Tour. That was just humbling and a great time with all those people. So, you know, I'm so glad to be here in Texas. This is a lake that I've always dreamed of having a classic on. I love this lake. You know, it sets up perfect for a classic right here by Houston. And uh, it's a really good lake, so I can't wait to get out there. Edwin Ebers, some final day heroics. That's what got him here as standing today, the defending champion. 52 anglers, though, in this field here, fishing for an over $1 million purse, the biggest payday of the year. And we say again, guys, the biggest opportunity of their year as they get set to go for the first time ever, a classic on Lake Conroe. And the minute that name came up, this was the place that was announced. One picture of one guy popped into everyone's head. No doubt about it, Tommy Sanders, and that's going to be Keith Combs. And as you say it, Davey Height, Keith Combs is going to start only a couple miles from our takeoff. Momentum is the key this morning. Momentum is the key, and you need to get something going, although most of the guys we talked with said they're not getting a lot of bites. So being calm and, and sticking to your plan is going to be the key here. Well, the pressure is on Keith Combs here, but he's done very, very well on Lake Conroe. And again, he's the big favorite. I definitely have a lot of history on Conroe. Not a lot in the spring, a lot of history in the fall, late summertime. But as far as knowledge of the lake, you know, I've, I've put my days in over here, I put a lot of preparation time. This lake is only two hours from my house. So I'm familiar with it, but um, you know, it's, uh, it, it's still fishing. This main lake stuff, anything on the main lake on Conroe is 
Probably gonna be a lot less fish this week because it's, it's a spawn, but in my opinion, that's where you got a chance to catch a really big one. So I'm gonna focus on that all day, various places. We're gonna stay out of the creeks and uh, hopefully catch us a big bag of fish. So you're looking at the angler right here that everybody's eyes are on for a reason. And Davey Height, you actually got to get out on the water with Keith Combs. And here's the amazing thing on the first spot you see Combs on is the time that he put in for this one event. Yeah, the most interesting thing I heard him say when I was with him on that practice day is he spent 110 hours, put 110 hours on his outboard pre-fishing for this Bassmaster Classic. So he'd been waiting a long time for that first hook set. Now, a lot of the areas that he is fishing, these are not vast, expansive areas. These are 10 to 20 yard stretches. Yeah, very. he very dialed in. The one thing that I noticed about Keith, he was focusing on the main lake, as he mentioned here, thinking that he could catch that 25 to 30 pound bag out on the main lake where other guys were not fishing. Keith Combs is only Bassmaster Elite Series victory. Came here in the state of Texas about three years back on Lake Falcon. We're gonna move now from Keith Combs working offshore right now, take you up the lake and you can see how built out this Lake Conroe is. No doubt about it, Tommy Sanders. And the one apparent thing that you will see throughout this classic, guys that are focusing on a shad spawn, seawalls very early in the morning. And this is a timing deal. This is a timing deal, not a ton of bites, but here's the beauty is you can load the boat very quick, at least the first hour. As we roll up on our defending champion, Edwin Evers, biding his time on Grand Lake in the 2016 Geico Bassmaster Classic till the weather allowed him to go up the Elk River and fish that spot, which yielded nearly 30 pounds of largemouth bass to make a huge margin of victory for the Oklahoma guys. Hometown guys, home state guys, that's the new trend. You gotta be from the home state to win the Bassmaster Classic in this day and age. He's not from Texas, but he's hoping to repeat this time around. Edwin Evers, hooked up. Biggin. Thank you, Lord. Man, this feels so good to get it started. Feels so good to get that thing started. Golly, finally get to catch some. Oh my goodness. Pounding. Golly. <laughs> oh, she's a keeper. All day long. Two pounds. Do you think Edwin Evers is keyed up trying to win back to back classics? Apparently, defending is what gets you really, really amped up, and Edwin Evers is there today. And Davey, you won a classic before. I mean, having won one before means probably everything, a greater appreciation of what's going on. You're right, Tommy. I remember the first bite I got in my first Bassmaster Classic, but once you win a Bassmaster Classic, you realize what a life-changing experience it really is. Man, I finally got it done. Is this something that you strive for and you want so, so bad? I don't, you know, people that are, that are athletes or people that, that compete, you know, everybody competes for the pinnacle for the very top spot. And uh, man, it's awesome getting there. You know, it's something that I dreamed of since I was a kid and couldn't be more excited that, that, it, that it happened last year. And, and once you're there, you just want it again that much more. The 2017 Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by Dick Sporting Goods is being brought to you by PowerPole, Minn Kota, Triton Boats. And by Hook.
Day one action from the World Championship of Bass Fishing, the Geico Bassmaster Classic. This is the 47th edition of this championship coming to you from Lake Conroe. Following six anglers today, including this man right here, Gerald Swindle, who won his second Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year title. Probably the only, the only title that ranks with this one, the Bassmaster Classic, and he won it on the last day of the season at Mille Lacs Lake. He absolutely did, and really it was one of those seasons, Davey Height, that was, there wasn't a crazy amount of victories. As Swindle said it, it was more of a small ball season. You know, Gerald described it as small ball season, but he had he had a lot of good tournaments, and that's the key to winning Angler of the Year, having good tournaments, having consistency. Five fish for 22 pounds even, becoming a two-time Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year. I don't know, I think, I think going into, I think it was at the end of the 15th season and going into the 16th season, I just, really started looking at myself as a fisherman, you know, just looking in the mirror and thinking, okay, what can you do better? Uh, being a student of the game, you know, and realizing that when I just pleasure fish and fun fish, I'm, you know, super relaxed and just staying, I think, focused, uh, not being in a hurry. And I started trying to put that into play in the 16th season, just have fun. And I set the bar pretty high for myself and I pushed myself, but being able to focus on that more, um, alleviate a lot of outside distractions the best you can and just focus on the game of bass fishing and, and why I got in it is because I love it. Well, very common message from every angler that we're covering here on day number one, this isn't a lake where you're going to catch 30 or 40 and all of them said the first two hours are critical. Really critical. You're exactly right, Z. You don't have to catch five fish in the first two hours unlike some places we go, but you are falling behind if you don't catch two or three quality fish in the first two hours. I think he'll measure, I don't know. Let's hope he's 16, that's the question. Open that bag just a little bit in here, come on. He'll make it. Yep, that's all he'll do, but he'll make it. Whew. Gotta catch one to get the five, there it is. Ooh. Right, make yourself a mental note there. 16 inch limit, larger than these guys are used to. They'll be turning back some pretty good looking fish during this special week as we move from Swindle down to Kevin Van Dam in a place that he says is loaded with them. Kevin said the dam has enough fish to win the classic 10 times over and he's fishing very slow and methodically along this dam. Fishing slow in a fast way, actually starting off the day with a jerk bait. Van Dam has fished almost, I don't know, almost three decades of classics, but he'll tell you this one is different. I mean, it seems like I just started, you know, five or 10 years ago, but I think it's, uh, I know it's my 27th season. I think this is 26 classics. So just trying to, trying to win another one, it, it's so hard. Uh, the field's so good and Lake Conroe presents a lot of challenges that you don't have um, at normal classics. Uh, you know, it's really strange this week because due to the scheduling of the event, the classic is later and we're further south. So, you know, record highs here, um, temperatures in the mid 80s every day. And, you know, it's been warm all winter, so the fish are a lot further along. So this is going to be a really different classic um, than we've had in the modern era where we've started these, these wintertime type events. There's one. Good one too. There we go. That's how you start the classic. Look at there. Ah! Good solid fish. You know, there's lots of fish in this lake that are big ones. You know, I mean, there's seven, 10 pounders, but there's a lot of quality fish like this right here too. That's a good start. You know, in this deal, it's all about consistency every day. You've got to have five every day, and you, those big bites, they're going to come. Oh, KVD with a solid first fish right there. He's got the hair, he's got the jerk fade. Tommy Sanders, it's flowing. Absolutely, never fails to impress. He also has the best classic record 
bar none of anyone in this field as we move on up to Dave LaFibra, a guy with a great record here on Lake Conroe. Our Geico quotes from the boat come from Robbie Floyd, who's nearby. The adage is slow and steady wins the race with Dave Lefebvre. He's slow flipping, but he's very steady as well. Two fish in the first hour and a half of competition, but this isn't a race today. And at this pace, he's doing really good because he knows there's six pounders in the mix. So Dave Lefebvre, the 2009 Toyota Texas Bass Classic winner from right here on Lake Conroe is looking good to start day one at the Classic. One thing that I like is the fish are exactly where they're supposed to be. I haven't got a bite yet you know, on high, covering the sea walls. Everyone I've got is right where they're supposed to be. I've slowed down in the best part, made repeated casts and got a bite. Well, that is a good bite right there for Dave Lefebvre. And if you look at the bottom end of this lake, it is docks and seawalls and rock, and it looks like he's just going along a seawall here, Davey, and that is actually not the case. It's not the case. I noticed he said the fish are exactly where they're supposed to be. He's dialed in more than these other guys that are just fishing the docks. He's, he's looking for little small differences in what's going on along those seawalls, little crevices and cracks. Definitely got something dialed in that I haven't seen anyone else in the field doing. Any small irregularity. A lot of really what he learned on Google Earth and a big one right there for Dave Lefebvre. What a great fish to start his day. Dave Lefebvre, we're going to slide from him back down the lake all the way to the dam. And here's where we find the 2003 Bassmaster Classic champion, Michael Iconelli. Exactly right. And different from Van Dam, you see Van Dam kind of going along the face of the dam with a jerk bait, not covering a ton of water, maximizing that stretch. Unlike Iconelli, who's really kind of fishing offshore right now, and he'll tell you, when you come to Conroe, the beauty, you can pick your poison. I think a lot of these guys are extra excited this year about this tournament, and a lot of it is how this lake plays out, you know, to our strengths. There's so much stuff to do, and it's small enough that I can go from fishing by the dam in deep water to going flipping up the river in 20 minutes. And that, that suits my style. I like that. But a lot of guys like that. They're going to have a field day out here. I'm excited, but I know a lot of guys are too. There's a big one. Big one. Golly. In your face, in your face, mama. Wow. What a hell of a way to start. That's six pounder. <laughs> six and a half. Oh, God. <sighs> lordy, lordy, lordy. Starting to bite, maybe. Feels good. Yeah. Feels good. Do, 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 do. I feel love in my face. I feel love in my hips. I feel love in my soul. I feel love in my soul. I feel love in my face. I feel love in my face. Woo! First ever Tony, Tony, Tony reference in Bassmaster history. Is that who that was? Yeah, absolutely. Tony, each one of them spelled different. That's amazing. Mike Iconelli having a good start. Who else is having a good start today? We can see it right there. Dave Lefebvre. You talk about a great head start on the field. All heading this way at the end of the day. The weigh-in coming to you from the home of the Houston Astros Minute Maid Park. We will see the transformation. But more fishing when we come back. H-Town, Houston, Texas, that's our host city for the World Championship, the Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. Meanwhile, on Lake Conroe, Dave Lefebvre of Pennsylvania 
guy with a good couple of early jabs in this contest. The only thing so far that I've seen consistent, guys need to catch those quality fish early. Just two or three bites in the first two hours are so important. Lefebvre and Edwin Evers as well, another angler who has put some good fish in the box already today off to a fine start. And Edwin Evers, our defending champion from Oklahoma, won on Grand Lake last year back in Oklahoma. He's got himself a pretty good sized pecan growing operation, big pecan grove there. When he's not out fishing, that's what his attentions are drawn to. That's some place that I spend a lot of time when I'm at home. It's a lot of fun working out there. Grass is really going to start growing here shortly, and that place is really going to come to life. It's my, it's my getaway, and uh, I really, really enjoy it. And, and uh, I enjoy watching those trees grow and grafting them and planting them and harvesting them. It's, it's just a cool, cool place. You know, to prepare for the classics like no other tournament, you, you, you try to cross every T, dot every I, you try to leave no stone unturned, and, and I, I was super excited when they announced Conroe Classic because five, six, seven years ago when the lake was seven, eight foot low, I mean, all time lowest it's ever been, I've got hundreds of photos of pea gravel banks, little rock piles, brush piles, logs, for me, mentally, I try to go through each and every possible scenario at those stage that fish can be in or cover that I think those fish might be relating to. So all I've got to worry about is finding the best winning pattern when I get down there. Edwin Evers talking about finding that winning pattern, doing his homework for Conroe. And really, this is a tournament where everything's working and there's no dominant pattern. But this shad spawn deal, which was talked about Really in pre-practice, Edwin, one of the only anglers making it work. Head gummit. Oh my goodness. Golly, I hope that's a bass. It is. Golly, he hit it hard. Oh. Good night. Stay on fish. Gotcha. Oh, number five. Oh my goodness, I don't know if y'all saw that. That fish took the rod out of my hand. <laughs> I still got him. Man, my hands were wet right after catching that little one right there off them steps. And uh, needed to dry him. It all slipped on me. Woo, buddy, my heart's going. We got five. We're in the Bassmaster Classic first day. And it feels good to have a limit by 8.21, I think is what that says. Well, and it also feels real good to actually give Edwin Evers, fair to say, the save of the morning. Definitely the save of the morning. We talked about needed to catch one or two good ones early on. He's got five. Well, absolutely. That's a, that's a head start on the field for sure. As we slide back down to the dam, we look at the scene right here. Two of the names that are guaranteed to draw a big crowd, Mike Iaconelli and Kevin Van Dam. No doubt about it, Tommy. And what Van Dam said coming into this tournament, it's going to be the most challenging event that he's ever fished for a classic because well, the fish are so spread out. There is fish in every stage right now. Um, you know, the bass are a lot further along than I would have guessed, um, you know, last year looking at this. So a lot of the fish are done spawning, a lot of the females are done. Um, a lot of people don't realize or understand that, you know, the same fish will spawn multiple times in a, in a year. You know, they'll come in, drop some of their eggs, and, uh, you know, conditions will, will change and, and they'll, you know, go back out and then they come back in. But, the fish are in that spawn type mode um, where there's still some late ones coming in. There's um, some that are garden fry. There's some post spawners that are that are already done. And um, you know the next thing that's happening is the bluegills are coming and spawn. The shad are spawning, and, and you know so they're they're staying around those areas. It's just they're in very different moods, and uh, during that post spawn period, it can be challenging. Might be a keeper. Yep, it is. Nice one. That'll work. I've fished down through here once. These fish just constantly move up and down on here. You can come here any time of the day and catch one, but. Mm. 
It's one of those deals, you know, you just... This is a tough lake, you just gotta grind them out. There's lots of fish on the graph right now. I mean, just suspended. You'd think that maybe first thing in the morning they'd be up there shallow, but the shad, they're so thick in this lake that on a typical shad spawn deal, you'd be right up there on the bank, but here, a lot of them are out off the bank even too. I mean, they're just feeding under the water. You're not seeing them blow up or anything like that, but you can see the activity level and, you know, everything's feeding. There's hybrids and, you know, bass, every predator in the lake is chasing these shad and they know it happens at night and first thing in the morning. So you got a window to, to make something happen in the morning and, uh, Gosh, I had about 17 places that I really wanted to be all at the same time, but I thought this would be a good good choice with the wind. Feels good. Oh. You're gonna be close. Yeah, that's a keeper. I believe that's a 16-incher. Fat pre-spawner. Well, you heard what Kevin Van Dam said. He said about 17 places he would like to be at at the same time this morning, but this is the spot that got the nod, and so far it's worked out to be a pretty decent decision. Three fish, three good keepers in the boat already on day number one, couple of hours into the fishing time. We're going to leave Kevin Van Dam now and take another look at just down the way there at the dam. Mike Iaconelli, we saw him catch two fish right there, and then he heads in the direction of Walden Marina. Yeah, he caught two fish on his first spot, exactly what he was looking to do. He stopped one more place and fish some underwater cover away from the dam headed towards Water Marine. Exactly right, and we talked about how small these spots are that these guys that are fishing offshore are concentrating on. And I can only tell you, it's, it's, it's a crunchy bottom, especially near the dam where that Carolina rig laser is coming through all that rock. But there's very specific things on the bottom that make his areas different, whether it's brush piles, wood, sometimes, a lot of these guys are concentrating on actual tires. Look at side imaging real quick. If you can see, they're tires, and they actually look like tires. This is one of the things we're fishing. It's a hard bottom, but you can see they went out and dumped a bunch of tires out here. Pretty cool image of what we're fishing. Let's move in and take a closer look at what he was talking about there and make that our Yamaha unlock the lake. Exactly right, and if you look at this side imaging right here to the left side of your screen, that's exactly what I can Ellie. Now, now, don't get me wrong. This is not on every single spot he's fishing. Some's just a little bit of rock, a little bit of rubble. And as you go under the water here, you'll see where some of that rubble mixes in with those tires. But it's almost like he's on transition areas, throwing a Carolina rig li lizard and a Berkeley bottom hopper finesse worm on a shaky head. And really, the entire key for Iconelli is just locking in an area and absolutely saturating it. Here's a big one. Oh God, giant. Mm. I found it. That was a, this is a big moment of the day. This is a turning point, it's almost noon. This gives us number three, and it's one of the kind that wins the classic. This may be a turning point for us today. We were just getting ready to run up the river. We might reconsider it and stay here today. We're gonna, we're gonna see what happens here in the next couple minutes. That's a big one. That's five, and a half. That's five pounds, easy, all day. I'm so I'm I'm shaking so bad I can't get the piece of the worm over there. Uh, I'm shaking like a leaf. Whew, that's the right kind. You got 11 pounds of two fish, you know. That's what you got to keep thinking about. You catch two more of them, then you're right in the hunt, you know. Michael Iaconelli, absolutely right, talking about those important turning points during the course of a day. Only three days of fishing. The Bassmaster Classic, so these days go by very, very quickly, and Iaconelli's got a 
Got an idea of how his should play out. Certainly playing out his way so far today, but a lot more fishing on the way. It's the 2017 GEICO Bassmaster Classic presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Brought to you by Toyota. Berkeley. Yamaha. And by Skeeter Boats. Day one at the World Championship of Bass Fishing, the Geico Bassmaster Classic, presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Boy, these days of the Classic go by so very fast. Already halfway through day number one, and think about what we've seen so far. And then think about what everyone's pregame favorite, Keith Combs, said about Lake Conroe, that it wouldn't be impossible, that all these guys could be doing yes. exactly what they wanted to do and getting by out there, and that's Third certainly one. what we've seen today. Think about Kevin Van Dam, one of the masters of what he's doing there. And Maybe we can break that down a little bit further. Let's take you inside the Shell Rotella Bassmaster Garage and two guys who can take anything apart and put it back together again, Davey and Z. Well, we're going to try Tommy Sanders, and really the techniques are all over the map right now. In fact, that's going to be today's Skeeter Taste the Bait. Looking at what Kevin Van Dam is doing, and he's one of the best on earth. And Davey Height, if you looked at the pre-tournament reports, nobody talked about a jerk bait. Kevin Van Dam throwing his Strike King KVD signature bait shallow and deep, and it looks like it looks like he's the only one doing it. It looked like he's the only one doing it because usually when we talk about jerk baits, we're talking about cold water, lethargic fish. It isn't that case here, but these fish have been pressured, and I think the jerk bait is a good choice by Kevin. And really, if you look at Kevin, what he's doing all day long, rotating those jerk baits. Here's the one thing, if he gets this going, well, he's the best on earth at it. So today, I caught every fish that I weighed in um, on a Strike King KVD jerkbait. You know, I either used a standard suspending, you know, medium running model, and I used a deep runner a lot on a lot of these deeper banks and, and deeper docks and things like that. So, uh, you know, those two baits right there, I know this time of year during this post spawn period can generate a lot of strikes from fish that are kind of neutral or negative. With the shad spawn going on, they really imitate the shad real well. And the bass react to them and it allows me to cover a lot of water. And you know, it's just something I have a lot of confidence in. It's, uh, it's something that I know I can catch them on. There's a giant. That's the Got it hooked on the side. Thought it was a lot bigger. It's a dang good one though. You got it a lot better than I thought. There we go. Nice one. There's still some doing all levels, but that's a good one. Number four. The four-time Geico Bassmaster Classic champion Kevin Van Dam doing his job, sliding into the top five on this first day of competition. Who's making a move today with Crochet, Justin Lucas, Edwin Evers, Chris Saldane, Alton Jones Jr. Names to watch. Plenty more movement coming when we return. We are on Lake Conroe, about 45 minutes of Interstate 45 from Houston, Texas, the Geico Bassmaster Classic. We are testing to find the top angler in the world. The guys who are done well today include the defending champ right there, Edwin Evers with a limit very, very early. Dave Lefebvre, second year man on the Bassmaster Elite Series. That's the way he started. Pretty darn impressive. Been the four time Geico Bassmaster Classic champion, Kevin Van Dam, off to a good solid start as well. And we go down to the guy who everyone bet would be the, the best bet at this classic. Keith Combs has not worked out this way so far. Yeah, he was certainly my pick, and he's really struggled today. Fishing a lot of different ways, and nothing's really been working for him. It just don't take long to change your day, but you gotta, 
you know, you, you got to have a few of these old shallow ones to mix in with the better ones out there, I think. I don't really know. <laughs> at, this, at this point of the day, I'm like, I don't know. I can't say nothing. I don't know what's going on. Here's a big one. Well, the talk of the last three years, the, the home field advantage of the Bassmaster Classic, there's also a bad side to that as well. No doubt, and it, it's a time of year deal. You, you, I was thinking time we caught something. Really listen to Keith Combs, the frustration, and he was hoping a lot of those spawned out fish would make their way to him. That's not been the case. And this tournament's been all over the map so far. So many different techniques. We're going to follow Edwin Evers. Now you go from a guy throwing a deep diving crankbait, Edwin Evers fishing in Walden Marina, doing something totally different. Totally different, but something you need to notice here, Edwin caught a good limit early. He's ahead of the game. It's a great time to go change techniques, sight fish with patience, because you need patience to be able to fish for these big fish. Oh! That's that big one. Golly, dead gummit. Dang it. There it is. Dang it. It's a giant. Holy smokes. How can I not catch that fish? <sighs> Edwin Eber's looking to pile on the rest of these guys, getting a good limit and trying to catch a giant sight fishing, but a little bit of frustration. Still, he's in good shape uh, versus the rest of the field right now at this point in the day as we move over to Michael Iconelli, who said, I, I, I might want to go up uh, up in the river, but he, he decided to stay here. Made a smart move here. He moved just outside this marina where he had fish that are still moving in the spawn back where Edwin's at, but catching a lot of these post spawners coming out. What's happening is these fish are changing every day, by the hour, literally by the minute. I'm watching these fish move. And keeping up with them is very, very hard. So to commit to one spot or to commit to one area and think you're going to win this event, it's not going to happen. You've got to stay fluid. I'm trying to really imagine how these fish are moving in and out of these places. And that's what I'm targeting. It might have kept, I don't know. Come off. God. <laughs> when it goes bad, it goes bad, you know? I mean, just like come up and do some like weird thing on the top and just pulled off. Yeah. You cannot afford to lose them when you're not getting, you know, you're getting this many bites. It's not like I can afford to lose any fish, you know? <laughs> Big one, giant. Oh my God, six pounder. Game over folks. Game over. Game over. G A M E O V E R. <laughs> this logs my leg. Six and a half. Yeah, we're not going. We're not going up river. We're not going up river. They can have that up river. We staying. It's a game changer. Well, I wish I had other places like this. I don't. <laughs> I don't. This is the only one, bro. Stupid shaky head. How about it? Mm. We got a big bag now, even we're staying. We don't make that run now. We take our time, 
We catch us one more big one and we're in the hunt for this win. That's what we do. Dude, I knew it was a big one as soon as I set the hook. I mean, he just absolutely plowed it. Thank you, Lord. Well, the moves that make it possible to win the Geico Bassmaster Classic Championship or the failure to move that can cause you to win the championship. We might have seen a little bit of both today. It was certainly the case not moving for Mike Iaconelli, sticking in his spot and getting some terrific results. Not too much time left to fish out on Lake Conroe, and they're lining up at Minute Maid Park. The weigh-in is soon. It's the 2017 GEICO Bassmaster Classic presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Brought to you by Mercury. Nitro Boat. Hummingbird. And by Shell Rotella. Minute Maid Park right here in the heart of downtown Houston, Texas. Big crowds lining up for the next three days. Not to watch the Astros in action, but to watch the best fishermen on earth in action. At the weigh-in, that's coming up. Meanwhile, 50 miles north up on Lake Conroe. Still some fishing left to go on this day. And Mike Iaconelli, well, he has played the game pretty darn well today for a first day of the Classic. Just needs one more fish to make out his limit. You know, Mike has really fished well today. He told us coming in that he needed to be patient, fish down the lake for the bigger fish, and he's done exactly that. This has been such a good spot for us, man. This, this really did save the day, you know? That one big one early helped, and it's been all this spot. Isn't that crazy? Dude, isn't that crazy? Big one. Oh my God. Giant. Yeah. Yeah. It's five. Number five. Important fish right there. It's two and a half pounds to what I had. And I, what I have is really good. <laughs> be patient, be patient. You look at that and you're like, it's a two pounder, big deal. But dude, getting number five is so important here, man. Well, that was Mike Iaconelli nearing the end of fishing time on Lake Conroe. Meanwhile, the crowd waiting for Iaconelli to show up and so he does at Minute Maid Park to kick off our way. 21 pounds, two ounces. He moves into fourth place currently. Mike Iaconelli, Asian baby. 21 pounds, eight ounces, 21 eighths. And a brand new Geico Daily Leader in the Cajun baby, Cliff Proce. Let me hear it from my crazy Cajuns. Bradley Roy in his very first Geico Bassmaster Classic, 22 pounds and an ounce former Rookie of the Year, and it's Rookie Classic. He's sitting in spot number two. Fishing his second classic. Boom, shakalaka, ch -ch 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 giant bass. Freak Panda coming up. Looking for 21 pounds, nine ounces. 23 pounds, three ounces. 23, three. And Brent Ayler is your brand new Geico Daily Leader. Gonna weigh that for Berkeley Big Bass. Nine pounds, 12 ounces. What a way to start the classic. Man, it, uh, it's been a grind out there. When I caught that fish, I went nuts. I mean, it's, uh, you know, to catch a big fish like that in any tournament is a big deal. I mean, it can make your entire tournament. But to do it at the Bassmaster Classic is on a whole new level. So. Uh, I'm very fortunate the way the day went today. Really had a lot of fun. Man, it's so fun catching a big one like that. <laughs> I had an absolute blast. So, uh, you know, we got a lot of tournament left, but man, I'm excited. It's the Bass Bachelor Classic. We're here in Texas. Anything could happen out there.
Well, that's some good fun right there. Be the guy who catches an almost 10 pounder to anchor your limit and take the lead on the first day. The Geico Bassmaster Classic. There's the top of our leaderboard, tightly bunched right there. And now it's time to recognize our Mercury move of the day, Mark. So I'm going to say it's the Mercury move of the day of the week, Tommy Sanders. Mike Iaconelli, two fish in his live well at about 11 o'clock in the morning. He goes out of Walden Marina right there. And as you say, Davey Height, well, that didn't save his day. Potentially saved his classic. It really did. We talked to Mike. Game over, folks. Before the tournament started. Game he over. said it's going to be really slow. If I can get one bite an hour, I'll be glad of that. And I'll be right on schedule. And it didn't look like he was feeling like he was on schedule. He made that move to the marina. Called that six pounder, it changed his day. No doubt about it. If you really look at the standings right now, it's not the guys that you're looking at at the top. You have to look at the, well, the biggest local in this tournament, Keith Combs, really. Outside of the guy leading this tournament, Keith Combs is the story of the event right now. Absolutely. Big surprise on, on Combs' part right there. Th things that don't surprise us, Iconelli, Evers, Van Dam, our former Classic champs, positioned well after one day of the Classic, but it's not one on the first day. That's why we'll go to day two next time. We see you right here to cover the Geico Bassmaster Classic 2017.